Hi everyone, this is Roy Barker. I'm a little gobsmacked because I had no idea there would be so many attendees today. I'm just watching the names on the right hand side populate as we're speaking. But that's great. Anyway, in this free webinar I'm going to tell you some steps and techniques uh, for free that you can use straight away in your photo business and I'm going to give you a free report as a bonus for taking action and showing up today. I'm assuming you know how to take reasonably good pictures. If you don't, this webinar will be of no use to you and you should look for a course somewhere else on the internet. So remember this webinar is about getting customers. It's very focused. Okay, that said, let's get this underway. A lot of this is uh, a lot of this information I'm about to give you is mindset based. But it's really easy to apply because most of it involves empathy. Very powerful tool in keeping customers on board and in fact attracting them. The first cab off the rank is the value of existing customers. Most people think that they've got a reasonable idea of this, uh, but I'm going to compare that and show you the differences between existing customers and with new customers. And we'll discuss that secondly as we move along. These items are more important than most people realize and the difference is significant. Okay, what I'm about to tell you I don't want you to treat lightly. It's quite powerful and I want you to do good things with the knowledge. It's used throughout the Western world in most marketing, advertising and PR campaigns. Okay, here are the six elements I want you to think about and apply to your business. Liking. Anybody who's going to buy from you is most likely going to like you. Unless you've got the only product in the world that uh, they don't have a competitor they can go to alternatively. And even then it's a preference that your customers like you. You might be thinking to yourself, well big deal, I already knew that. Well it's more special than people give it credit for. Here's why. People like to do business with people who are like them. It's true. They like to know that you have similar experiences as them. Good and bad experiences. Here are some tips to ensure that this liking scenario works better for you. Use little stories to get your point across. Your own experiences are best. Don't be afraid to reveal human failings. People relate to that and trust you more because of it. Third one, don't be afraid of humor. Some people find that a little difficult, but if you be yourself, you'll find that it comes or becomes more fluid. But if there is to be a victim in your humor, as there often is, make sure that it's you. It's safer that way. Keep away from religion, politics, or bad-mouthing others. And listen, don't ever, ever belittle your competitors. It's tacky and unprofessional. The next one is authority. You must be able to gain respect for what you've already achieved. This doesn't mean you have to prove you've made a big sale but it does mean that you need to display that you provide quality and you know what you're talking about. I.e. instructions for posing or portrait positions, lighting, composition, photo manipulation, etc. It goes on and on. You know what I'm talking about. Well, for example, you should present a portfolio and talk about some of the things you've achieved and indicate some of those things for their own shots for the work that they want you to do for them, hopefully. You'll know this when the time's right. So I'm talking about presenting your professional knowledge and why that is important to the outcome of the photos that they're looking to have done. It shows that you are an authority and that's without bragging of course. Next is commitment and consistency and by that I mean people like uh, 
or have more faith in someone's service when they can see examples of someone's commitment to their trade or industry or their art or um, anything or even in the actual way that you treat them as a customer it should be consistent and you should be committed to your art or your trade or your business people can see that in for instance the time that you might have had your business um, the time that you've been involved in photography the devotion or dedication you might have had to your particular niche or passion in photography you could explain to them um, through images how long you've been doing or taking photographs um, we talked about a niche you know the area that you that you specialize in be it wedding photography or portraits or children photography pet photography and, and so on um, and any courses that you might have attended and completed uh, there's not much point in telling them about courses that you didn't complete uh, and that's both online and offline um, and what do you do for your customers that is different to your opposition and are you consistent with that scarcity well this can be a different difficult one probably the best way to explain this is if it's an opportunity for your first shoot with a prospective client make them a special offer of some kind or discount that ends in two days or seven days or tomorrow if they take it up inside that time frame they will receive the discount or the extra bonus that's what scarcity means some salespeople and marketing firms use it in more aggressive ways but I would suggest to you that's probably the area in which you should use it in the photography arena everyone likes a deal including me and uh, I don't think you should ever leave scarcity out of your program in any shape or form I do however recommend that you sit back and think about it and the time that you would reveal it in your presentation you don't have to use my examples with these elements you'll constantly come up with new ideas when you're talking with customers and often when you least expect it in fact uh, more will come to mind just make sure you understand the six elements of influence and where scarcity fits in with that uh, so you can apply ideas and photo packages accordingly reciprocity keep in mind that all of these six elements are all based on human instinct so there's an innate element inside we human beings that wants us to follow these six elements of um, influence sorry digress there a little but more importantly reciprocity or reciprocation um, is something that you must use and this is one of my favorites actually you should always give something to your potential customers and, and yes existing customers too um, on a less frequent basis and it must be of value it can't just be something that you want to get rid of or um, is got a little bit of value it must be ha it must have good value people need to be able to see what you can provide it could even be a coupon it doesn't have to be a free report which I'm well known for passing away it doesn't have to be a video it doesn't have to be a car it can just be something that allows them to have to use for some level of value down the track or even a an enlargement of their family um, all of these things create a desire normally within humans to give something back you're not really asking for them to give you anything back but you do want them to feel uh, that innate desire to use your services or buy your uh, shots um, when the time does come about and by giving something away of value they can actually feel more safe or confident in the kind of work um, that you can produce and the style of person that you actually are you'll be way ahead of your competitors with actions like this and guess who they will remember there will always be an innate urge to give you something back it's just human 
Social proof. This is also a good one, but it's sometimes difficult to do when you're first starting your business and you're just getting underway if you haven't done any work for anybody before. But if you do have any customers who are happy with your service, don't be afraid to ask them for a brief testimonial. These should be real. Don't ever use false testimonials. You can come unstuck and it's against the law in most Western countries, by the way. I think you should know that. And it's always better to start off on the right foot. Show them the photo packages that most people buy and it wouldn't hurt to highlight that with an arrow or uh, a, a short caption to show that uh, this is the most popular package in your portfolio of products. Um, that's a form of social proof as well. It means that people are buying your products and this is the particular one that most people can afford or go for. Uh, it does work well. Be honest about your advice in everything you do. It really does work out better down the track. If you have previous work, make sure you disclose uh, at least one thing from each shoot in your portfolio and early stages of your business. This is, again, also social proof. Don't disclose anything personal about previous customers without their permission, but don't be afraid to show them some of your better work and talk about it. Remember that little bit about stories? This is where it all comes in. Okay, listen up. These six elements are powerful when used together and when you plan them. Don't try and use them spontaneously, they usually don't work that way. Strategically fit them into your repertoire or presentation process. If you want to be a better student of sales psychology, I recommend you go out and purchase a book. Just a, I think they're 20 bucks or $19.50 or something. And it's called Influence by Dr. Robert Cialdini. And that's C-I-A-L-D-I-N-I, -I Ph.D. You can get it at Amazon or larger bookstores like Barnes & Noble. Uh, and it covers what I've mentioned above in greater detail and is worth every penny. I don't make anything from it, but I highly recommend it. Okay, now for a little bit of discovery. Let's do a quick poll. Under the video, I'll drop in a poll in the next few seconds, if it hasn't turned up already, which you can quickly fill in and then see the results within just a few seconds. It will show me and you the general attitude about photography sales amongst subscribers, your fellow subscribers, uh, including yourself. Um, it's going to be significant because there are quite a few of you in, in attendance here today. Um, and in addition, you'll be able to see the results not long after you finish the poll. The survey poll will show up under the video if it hasn't already, so have another look. I know I've just said that, but ah, here it is. And I have uh, enough. So the three questions, I guess, will be, that will be asked will be: um, You will leave a tick. I have enough customers already, but just want to service them better. Or number two, I want more customers quickly and I want to learn how to get more business from them. Or number three, I just want to do photography as a hobby and I don't think about customers much at all. Let's talk about an essential tool. A good, no, strike the word good, an excellent portfolio is essential. By essential I mean it must be well thought out you must be able to see evidence in that portfolio of your ability as a photographer, meaning what you can do on behalf of the customer. Remember, seeing is believing. Don't leave the portfolio with them to go through by themselves. That's a common and bad mistake. Take them through it personally. Add three to five minutes to your presentation. Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you'll get better and better and better at this and you'll be able to show them, for instance, posing principles, sizes, put ideas in their mind with different types of framing, 
group photos, make suggestions. Above all, be caring. Remember, they're human too. And they don't understand photography as well as you. And that's why it's important you need to take them through it. If you do these things every time with your portfolio, you will do well. Listen, you'll always have the rat bags and the whingers and the whiners. They come with any kind of business. Well, now that I've said that, try to work with people you like. Fight for people you like. You'll have a better business life. It'll be less stressful. And you, your goal is to work with people you like. Let's talk about customers. Oh, I can see that we're coming to the end of the webinar. And if you really want to enhance the strategic knowledge you've learned today, uh, you'll be nicely surprised in a few minutes. Let's talk about customers again. Customers are valuable. I want you to treat them that way. I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. Look after them and listen to what they say. Sometimes they'll tell you what they'll want to buy. Here's another angle. One customer might be worth 100 to $200 first time around, but if that customer is happy and you keep in contact, they're likely to use you again. They're also likely to recommend you. So with a second job and less caution, that could be worth another 100 to $200. Let's call it $100. So now you've potentially earned $200, $100 from the first shoot, $100 from the second shoot and a recommendation of $100. We now have a potential of $300 from one good customer. On the other hand, if you've always found yourself chasing new customers, it will become expensive due to advertisements, lengthy sales pitches, attracting leads in other ways. And no one ever mentions this, but you'll also get tired of constantly selling to new people year in and year out. It's much better and smarter to work towards being in demand. You can do this with strategies. Don't get me wrong, you'll need to drum up business for a while until word of mouth takes over. That's a given. If you like what you've learned here with the strategies today, you'll probably want to know how to attract qualified leads to your business. I've prepared a sequence of informative photography business editions that is solely focused on getting and keeping customers and tells you exactly how to do this in many different modes or niches of photography. By the way, qualified means people ready to hire a photographer or have the intention of hiring a photographer in the near future. These include restaurant photography, church photography, school photography and many others. I've also provided step-by-step -step instructions for inexpensive and in many cases free advertising and PR for your services in your local area. Yeah, for your local area. It's for struggling photographers who are good at photography but are worried about cash flow and time. They were my biggest issues back in the day. You can even have photography work in as little as two weeks with this information I'm talking about. Anyway, there should be a link under the video by now that allows you to access uh, that information I'm talking about. If you think you would, if you, um, it would help you get customers to contact you. That's what you'd, you'd, you'd go further if you were looking to do that. Just as long as you understand that what it's designed to do is to get you customers quickly. It doesn't teach you how to take better pictures. It's very focused on getting business quickly. By the way, it won't work for you if you're a lounge lizard. You'll have to go to work. Don't let anyone try to fool you into believing you'll be successful otherwise. Success comes from work. Greater success comes from working smart. I've laid out all the techniques, steps and principles for you to straight away use this in photography business quick steps. That's the name of it. <laughs> Some people join up just for free bonuses, but I really would like to see you join for the invaluable customer acquisition knowledge. Now it's up to you. I hope you've enjoyed the information above and uh, I hope you use it. I'd like you to do good with that information, by the way.
because it does become powerful and you'll see what I mean when you start using it. Stay focused, this is Roy Barker signing off and thanks for attending today, look after yourself.